All right, big brother, here's your power supply that you've been waiting a good little while on. Whew. I'll tell you what, man, this is only my uh, second... I take that back. This is my first 200 amp, 200 amp supply using the uh, modules. This is my very first one using the actual modules. Now, I, I've done one with one less module with one less module which pretty much is 180 amp supply I sold it as a 150 to the fella so this is the first time I've done one we'll put it this way it's the first time I've done one in this case first time I've done one with this amount of modules so as you're building it you've got to make your decisions up as you go that's just the way it rolls alrighty I haven't put you a light in there for you, bud. You didn't ask for it, but I went ahead and done it for you. As you can see, it's sitting right there at 15 volts even. <clears throat> That's why I got a 15 volt voltmeter, because it ain't gonna go above 15 volts. We've got the digital voltmeter hooked back here. As you can see, 15.02 right there on the mark. There's your positive, positive, and there's your negative. Got some good airflow blowing out this thing. That's what you want, man. Keep your modules good and cool in there. As they're being used to drop the hammer on a mud duck out there. <laughs> All right. These are your switch plus your breakers. So if something happens, it's going to go off like that right there. If you ever have an issue... Now, I know you had to have this 110 volts. I prefer 220. I prefer 220 on 200 amp and up. That's just what I prefer. So what we went ahead and did is gave you a 20 amp plug like we spoke about. Now, I don't have a 20 amp receptacle here, so I had to make my own just for your supply. See? So I had to go buy this, buy the receptacle, and wire it up today just so I can hook your supply up. Which goes all the way over here to my 220 receptacle. And I got it hooked up on one side of the 220 receptacle. So, yeah. I don't build a lot of power supplies. So, you know. I didn't have one already ready to go. Alright. Let's go ahead and pop the top off and show it to you real quick. very 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 clean supply I think it came out great I was not going to use a bus system to begin with I was just going to take the wires the DC the, the DC output wires from the modules and just bust them in all together and uh, deal away with the extra length through toroids and etc but I quickly saw the amount of room I had in this thing, which wasn't much. You know, it's, I had just enough room to do what I needed to get done. That it would be a lot more efficient for me to use a bus system. Using a copper board. Alrighty. So here we go. You don't even really need them filter caps, but I had a little bit of room right there, so I went ahead and threw you threw you in some. That's about 10,000 microfarad worth of uh, capacitance. Okay, there was some room there, so I thought I'd go ahead and just fill it in with some filter caps. So there she is, man. Every DC wire is the same exact length. 100% identical length. You want all these modules to load up equally with each other. These bad boys aren't designed to be used the way that we are using them. So, we have to do a little bit of extra work to make them work properly. It is a lot more labor. A lot more labor to build these than to take an old toroid right there. A 250 amp toroid right there and build a power supply with, with iron core but you got your pros and cons heaviness regulation etc so you definitely got your pros and cons
I decided to I decided to bust the AC the hot and neutral as you see that was a little bit time consuming but a lot of people they'll just snake the AC they'll bring one wire in and jump units like that you know and I mean we are dealing with AC that definitely will work but I'd rather do it the best way possible and let, every, and let each module have its own power wire so that I know it's getting all the amperage it needs even on the AC end another that way you can do things which I've never seen anybody do is if we were running this on 220 we could run these modules in series right but guess what there's no need to do that but you can still do a series configuration when you want to get in the uh, um, cutting your amperage in half etc etc it definitely was uh, something I utilized with iron core when I was running stuff on 220 all right bud thanks for hanging in there with me bud it uh I think it turned out great, man. I wish it was mine. <laughs> I need one of these. Let's see. I need one of these, but about four times bigger. Two, four, six, eight. Five times bigger. If I could have me a thousand amp with these bad boys, I'll be sitting good. Take a look at that big box right there. That box is twice the size of this one. I wonder what supplies going in that one. <laughs> Can we say 400 amp? All right, bud. I'm going to quit killing you, you, your time. I'm burning valuable time here. There's your light right there. So at night time you can see your voltage meter. Basically when you put a good load to this thing, put a decent load on it, you're going to fall back to about 14 and a half when you see that happen. Anywhere from 14 and a half or so, don't freak out. Um, typically when you're running bigger supplies like this on 110, typically you can see a little bit more voltage drop on your output right here than you would see if it was running on 220 especially if it gets to struggling me personally you know you got 14 gauge wire in the wall me personally i personally wouldn't run this box to its maximum off the wall even though you got a 20 amp connector on it and we got the proper amount of wire 12 gauge wire going to the 20 amp connector you still got wire on your receptacle made for 15 amps you see what i'm saying so yeah five amps you know da, 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 da. that's just me personally but uh if you heck if you ever want to you can put this uh hook this thing up you got you a dryer outlet or something something that's got four prongs preferably four prongs preferably take you a 110 take your neutral and you got your ground. So you can make you an outlet to run this thing at absolute full capacity on a 220. Right now, I've got it hooked up on a 220 line over there. And I'm only utilizing two wires, hot and neutral. So the ground, which is hooked up to this box, ain't even hooked up right now. So I don't prefer to run it like this. And I'm not going to run it like this, preferably. That's for extra protection, you know, if you... If your neutral wire ever breaks or something like that, you know, I don't really like tying in neutral and grounds together myself. I know some people don't mind doing it. They call that a bootleg ground. <laughs> but uh, there wasn't nothing wrong with me hooking this up just to let you see that it powers up just fine. I might throw a little five pill on it later. I might shoot a little video of me doing that just so you can see it's you know working and all that good stuff. But uh, let me get on off here, man. This thing's beautiful. It turned out great, dude. Great. Uh, I think I think I'm just gonna pack this thing up and head to Mexico. We'll see you, man. I'm going.